All right, guys, the mailman just dropped off another one of those Ukrainian locks. I bought it for, on eBay from that Ukrainian dealer that I bought, oh, many, many locks from. A lot of times, though, the shipping costs more than the lock, and this was no exception. Anyway, pretty cool-looking lock. You can see this thing is just massive, very, very heavy, um, super thick shackle. Uh, it gives the feeling, you know, the con it gives you confidence that it's a secure lock, and we're going to find out. It's got a neat logo here. I have no idea what it, it looks a lot like the old Pan American Airlines logo. Got the Meridians on there. Anyway, you saw that on the painted on the uh, tail of all of their aircraft. Got a pinhole here and a number. I don't know what that is. Five, I guess. I no idea what any of that means. Uh, it's got a nice MC hammered. I have no idea what MC stands for, but it does have a nice hammered paint finish. You see some overspray, and that's because the bottom of this is different. It's almost like there was a remnant from the metal casting, and they, they ground it off and then spray-painted it black to cover it up. Um, grind marks on the keyway as well. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Over here, let's see if I can get it through, through the camera lens. You can see where they pinned it through the side of the lock and then painted over it, but you can still see it. One, two, three, four, five pins. This may be a four-pinner. And the fifth one might be the, the brass rod that retains the core. I think it's probably a five pinner because I noticed on the front here we had a little pin that kind of lines up with that core. So that's probably the core retention pin. It does not go all the way through. Um, over here we have another pin that holds the shackle in place. Um, we have aluminum core, which is not unusual on Russian locks. Um, I do have a bag of keys. So let's take a look, see what we got. Looking through the bag, it does look like a five pinner. Yeah, so we got a five pinner, and actually we got might have got lucky on this guy. Pretty good bidding. And let's take a look here. So get past that those burrs from the grinding. That wasn't too bad. Oh no. Okay, let's try counterclockwise. Okay, so counterclockwise. Uh, a lot of Russian locks open counterclockwise. The thing I was kind of worried about on this one, it looked like it was starting to turn clockwise, and now that it's open, it goes all the way over. Most of these locks, and I'm probably going to have to get a light, but I think you can see the actuator down there that locks through this square cut on the shackle. So it's a mechanical lock. We're not going to be shimming this guy, but once it's open, this probably stops right about there. That's about where I was turning it to when the shackle was closed. So it was probably limited by the shackle. So let's slide it back in, turn it. Yeah, it does ro rotate a little far, but the reason I keep pointing that out is... A lot of times you can uh, determine which way to pick these by the spring tension on the pins. And let's see if I can find a tensioner here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Try the thick one. Get out of here. All right, so let's try this guy. So we know it opens counterclockwise. So let's say we didn't know that. Let's say we pick it that direction. Here's how you figure it out. Let me grab a pick. And what we do, we put a lot of tension on the core in the direction that we believe it opens. And then take your pick and then feel those pins. And if none of them are binding, and these aren't, if none of them are binding, then it tells you that you're probably picking it in the wrong direction. You know, be really suspicious of uh, Russian locks or locks from a former Soviet republic. All right, so let's go ahead and try to open it. I'm going to try the easy way first. And that would be with a rake. All right, it is locked. Go counterclockwise. Take this guy. Light tension. Now, there is heavy tension on the core, but I think we, when I turned the key, I felt it give a little bit. And there we go. And then the core tension picks in right about there. And then you've really got to turn it to get that thing to open up. So not too bad. Let's flip it back, lock it back up. All right, now let's try to pick it, single pin pick it. And I'm hoping, because I didn't feel like there were any security pins, and there usually aren't, uh, I'm hoping we can just bully it. And so I'm going to apply pretty good tension on my finger there, slide it in, feel around, find a binder. That was pin two. And I'm literally forcing these, just like we do master locks. Yeah, it feels like pin one. Pin four. All right, I'm, I'm worried I'm picking the tensioner, but it feels like that's the pin. I'm good. 
and there we go. All right, not too bad. No security pins in these guys. You know, despite the huge size and the massive shackle, this thing remains pretty easy to rake open. Pretty easy to single pin pick. So I really wouldn't use it to secure anything too valuable, for, but for intimidation purposes, put this on the end of about a one meter rope and swing it over your head. Make a great, you know, threatening object. If somebody's trying to cut you off in traffic, this thing would work great. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.